This is a with mastication episode. Yeah. I'll be done soon. <laughs> they should all be with mastication. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Spooky Sips, where we put our love of horror movies into a podcast and sip some spirits along the way. I'm one of your hosts, Yvette, here with my co-hosts, Laura and Brianna. Hello. Hey. All right, so we just finished watching Stop Motion. I don't know if you've heard of this movie yet, but if you haven't, you need to go check it out immediately. It's a very recent movie, so it, I think, was it this year or last year? 2023. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It came out in like film festivals 2023. Okay. Then, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's about this girl whose mom was a famous stop motion filmmaker. Um, she's helping her mom make a movie and she ends up, you know, going off and making her own movie. And the two worlds just kind of start to intermesh into one another. Mm-hmm. And that's the movie. Mm hmm. Holy shit, you guys. I <laughs> I mean, I I had heard that this movie was a doozy, but I was not prepared for the horror I felt watching it. Um so good, but so scary and so freaking disturbing. Yeah. I just this was one of those movies that just rocked me to my core. Yeah, because we should say sometimes we come to a movie all together, and then sometimes one of us is like, we should do this movie. So this was mine that I was like, I heard of it just randomly one day, and then I kind of deep dived into what it was, and I was like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Like, I had a feeling it had potential to be very, like, an actual horror movie. Mm Mm-hmm. I feel like just the movie poster, honestly, is kind of enough to make me watch it. Yes. Like, if you want a little bit of a tease but don't want to watch the full trailer, like, just just look at the movie poster. Mm -hmm. Not to be, Mm -hmm. like, judge a book by its cover, but I actually think the cover was enough to convince me. Completely agree. (laughs) Yeah. And it's very fitting to the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, maybe we just start at the beginning because that Mm -hmm. my my first note um, in my series of fever dream notes that I took was just spinning egg question mark my first note was (laughs) ominous floating egg (laughs) (laughs) we have an egg at the beginning and okay i listened to a couple um because this is a smaller movie it doesn't have as many like fun facts and like as spelled out of like an imdb wikipedia so i just watched a bunch of interviews with the director and he also calls it an ominous egg nice so (gasps) it was supposed to look like an egg Okay, it did. Yes. Mission accomplished. What is the egg, though? Well, <laughs> that's good. That's good that it's supposed to be an egg because although, and it's it's good that you mentioned that you felt like this was a fever dream, Yvette, because I know that you technically had a fever while watching this movie, mm-hmm. but I also felt like it was a fever dream and I was healthy. But because of that, I dream analyzed the ominous floating egg. <gasps> so when we get to the psych segment, I'll talk about what I think the egg is about oh my gosh i i wrote down okay how how much of the egg was in this movie because like there like there's kind of a lot of, of my notes are about the egg yeah, it, <laughs> you really it, you really focus comes up throughout there's yeah. like it's not a lot of screen time but the screen time it is makes you be like what yeah 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 it's yeah it's not a long duration but it it's impactful that's true. It because I, I well, it impacted me apparently. Yeah, because yeah. I also loved the intro sequence of just her face in yes. the strobing lights. That was so good. Oh my gosh! I literally watched it and then I stopped and I rewound it and I watched it again because wow. it was so cool. Like yeah. her face morphing at the end and it being a smiling and a like it phenomenal. It, it was yeah. an amazing scene. I I wrote holy facial expressions. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> because it's like yeah, it as as the strobe goes. Like at first, it's just she, her face kind of changes, and it's not a big deal. It's just like changing as you know, as you were watching someone smiling, mm-hmm. or at a party in a strobe light. But then it intermixes with these evil expressions, and I just think that would have been so hard to do as an actress. Like, mm-hmm. it was so cool. No, yeah. it just transitions like beautifully. Like it, mm-hmm. it's. It was a really good start to this movie. You know, you get that, like, this, you know, flashing 
effect to create the transitions mm-hmm. very like you know obviously inspired by stop motion mm-hmm. um so yeah, like I, I really like the intro yeah like it sets the tone mm-hmm. for the movie yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yep so then i feel like it just gets into we see so the, the main character's name is ella mm-hmm. and it gets into her making stop motion which do you think that the the material for the initial stop motion movie, which is she's making it, she's helping her mom make this movie, is it wool? Or what do you think is the the little uh, Cyclops characters? What is that? Well, so I of? did a little bit of a research dive into like stop motion, how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a way to take the mortician's wax with wool and you blend them really well together, okay. and that's probably what it was. So it was it was still the mortician's whack, but it's got that fluffy effect to it because you mix it in with the wool. Apparently, oh. those two work well together. Okay, so mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like she's she's making. Um, and at first, I didn't realize that the 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 person was her mom. So I just wrote the old lady is directing. Yes. Um, and uh. Essentially, Ella is acting as her mom's hands because her mom's hands are all messed up from just years of making stop motion. Mm-hmm. So she's directing her. But the tension. The oh. tension is palpable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ella and her mom. Holy moly. Yeah. Because her mom is just kind of looming over her. Mm-hmm. And you can just feel the yeah. nerves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the way that the mom says... Don't move a muscle. I'm like, yeah. that's terrifying. <laughs> mm-hmm. So scary. <laughs> no, it was, it was ominous. <laughs> yeah. But then right off the bat, her mom has a stroke. After so she's so it's really a tense scene. The mom is not being very nice to Ella, who's helping her. You can tell yeah. that this they have a pattern of her mom just speaking to her horrifically yeah like abusively like abusively Mm -hmm. and bossing her around and then she strokes out and maybe even physically because i noticed that there were moments where the mom got like meaner and she like would cower and kind of like so it it could have even been that like you know her mom was physically abusive like you just you get the sense that like she is afraid of her mom Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Oh, I feel like we also have to talk about what they're wearing. Oh my gosh, that was one of my, I didn't take many me. notes. Yeah. But one was, what is the blue smocks? Yeah, no, they're wearing these like smocks, which again, it's like unnecessary, but also somehow makes sense. Like, you know, that her mom forces her to wear this uniform, mm-hmm. even yeah, though they're filming in their house. Yeah, like, like they, they have to put it on before they even enter the room where they're filming. Like you can tell that's the ritual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think just like maybe to separate in your mind, like you're now in filming zone. Like you're yeah. now, you know, you put your smock on and you're in the zone. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's not at all the same. But the only thing that has made me think of is like, have both of you read Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> No. Yes, ashamedly I have. <laughs> okay, so it's like in Fifty Shades of Grey, um, before oh, what? Anastasia, stop. before no, she goes into the red room, she has to put her hair back in a certain way, and it's like a uniform. It's the ritual of like preparing your mindset for going into the red room. Is you have to like don that certain outfit and appearance to get yourself. Yeah. they were filming in like a red room, right? Wasn't it like a red uh-huh. background? Yep. Yeah. So basically um, the same movie. Yeah. 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 Really. <laughs> tomato. So tomato. much overlap. Anastasia, <laughs> Ella. You know. I mean, obviously, I'm a fan of Fifty Shades of Grey, considering that I'm the biggest twy hard there is. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> okay, but we won't we won't dirty this episode up with that because yes. it's not at all related. <laughs> it just made me think of it. So the mom is in the hospital. For a second, I thought she had died, but I feel like it. They leave it like they don't tell us for a second that she's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but we know she's just in the hospital. And during this, Ella decides she's going to work on her own project. 
And yeah, right. Let's talk about how she makes that choice though. And I mean, part of it is that when she's in the hospital, they're asking her what she wants to do with her mom. And she's like, I don't make decisions. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I don't make the decisions my mom does. Mm -hmm. Um, So we kind of see that she's very sheltered Mm -hmm. from her mother. Mm -hmm. And, and I think before she makes the decision, she gets this vision of her mom, which really freaked me out. She gets this vision of her mom in the room, but it it's not her fully her mom. It's just her mom's body with just the organs showing. It's like her skin has all been removed mm-hmm. and it's just the organs and it's really gross. Disgusting. I must have just like blocked that from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna, yeah, there were a lot of moments in this that I was like, I wonder how a vet's doing right now watching. I looked this. away <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> there was so much. Yeah, was I so watched much. movies like hugging a throw pillow, you know, and then yeah. just, just duck down when needed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so she moves in and and one of my other notes was this. She moves into this apartment building that her boyfriend Right. Gives her. And I was like, what is this place? Yeah, like, what? I was like, why is she working in an abandoned building? Because then there were still other people. And so I was like, what? Yeah. Like the boyfriend had said, I think that they were planning to tear it down. Like right. maybe this like a development thing. But yeah, so it's like a half empty. So she's building. working out of it. And yeah. But it's like a but there was like a co-working space available or like a like a yeah. basement right. and <laughs> I was kind of feeling like she felt um that she needed a space to separate from the house of her mom. Right. Because she yes. wouldn't be able to be creative. Mm-hmm. Even though her mom was in the hospital, she couldn't even be in the house where her mom lived because it was just gonna sti- continue to stifle right. her. Yeah. I, but yeah, she does she goes and she sets it all up identical to how it was at her mom's house, the mm-hmm. the mom's movie with the ogres. Mm-hmm. And she meets this sus girl on the stairs who's singing <laughs> this cute little song. Um, and then the girl's very like pushy. Yeah, I just and, wrote down this little girl is so annoying. Yeah. So here's how I know that I've been in too much therapy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because my first note immediately was, oh, this is just her inner child, right? Oh, you immediately caught that. See, I wanted to ask you all when you when you knew. It was immediate for me. So you I think my therapist. I suspected it as soon as the little girl suggested that she had to use meat for the fox, which we'll get to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Right. Or meat mm-hmm. from the fox. That's when I was like, this girl is her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, half my notes are about the egg, and the other half are about the little girl. <laughs> um, like, my notes are just like, oh my god, this little girl is so annoying. Oh my god, this girl's so annoying. WTF is this little girl? Where are her parents? Little girl seems witchy. <laughs> and then, oh, wait, okay, I thought this was about her. No, this is about the, uh, aw, she, meat doll, is kind of cute. I thought maybe that was about the little girl. I thought That's so. That's actually about the meat doll. <laughs> <laughs> See, that goes to show your mindset related to children. Mm-hmm. So that, that half my notes were trying to figure her out. I'll Morticia. blame the fever dream, but I, it took me a minute to realize Mortician she wax. Real. Mortician wax meat dolls are cuter to you than children. <laughs> okay, but the little, I'm skipping ahead, but the little scene where the little meat doll walks into her room before she stabs right. her. Um, but she was, she's like walking in, like jumps on the bed. No, she's cute. cute. She's cute. She was yeah. kind of cute. I would have one in my house. Yeah. <laughs> she's pretty cute. Yeah. Not wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so like, so before it, it's revealed pretty much at the end of the movie officially that the little girl is just right. a vision that Ella is having. She's hallucinating mm-hmm. her. Um, but the little girl, uh, she wants to know what Ella's doing. And Ella explains armature. Mm-hmm. to the little girl which mm-hmm. i forgot to i forgot to look up the actual definition did either of oh, you it's that? just the it's i think the definition says like a skeletal a, a mechanical skeletal thing for a doll thing for a doll like okay. it is just mm-hmm. like an animatable skeleton okay okay mm-hmm. that makes sense but yeah the girl's like this this story is boring i have a better one and that's i think what pushes ella to decide to throw out her mom's set 
with the mm-hmm. cyclopses, which were well, which were also kind of cute but creepy, um, and to work on her own. Yeah, mm-hmm. story. Well, she, which is really the girl's story. And she starts working on it. I th- feel like that, that was kind of interesting. Where it's like she works on it, but almost as if she like blacks out. You yeah, know, working on these stories. Like you kind of get the sense of like she wakes up and mm-hmm. everything's kind of a mess, but she has made some of the movie. Yep. You know, so like to me at least, I was like, did is she even making the movie? Like, is it mm-hmm. even her doing the animating? Like yeah. it's she's making the story, but is she's not in control. Yeah, because exactly. like in the beginning, her boyfriend comes in and her set is all different and and changed and she gets upset she's like i don't know who did this like Mm -hmm. and he's like you did look and he presses play and it animates the video like yeah right yeah and then you can tell she kind of like accepts that it was her Mm -hmm. that made it but that but that yeah she had blacked out and she doesn't really remember doing it right Mm -hmm. so it's like she's just totally dissociating from Mm -hmm. her life while she makes the movie and then yeah there's a lot of psych in this movie Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but also okay and i'm not sure at one point if she was then making meat or something but he had it in her fridge yeah because her boyfriend was like gonna wanted her to eat and so he brought steaks okay but she didn't eat them and so the little girl went to her fridge and there was mm-hmm. like steak because that then reminded me like just something about the meat in this movie If anything's going to make you a vegetarian, it's the meat in this movie. And, like, even the very first scene where Ella is cooking it for her mom, like, it just, the squishiness of it, like, that that was one of my first notes. That steak looks terrible. (laughs) Well, because that was, that was one of my notes, is I think part of what makes it so gross is the sound effects. Yes. Yeah. Like, the sound engineering was unmatched because like it was the most disgusting sound effects and i think that's what made everything so gross yeah no it was almost like asmr level sounds but it worked really well like it's like you like i feel like i believe the sounds it didn't take me out of it it Mm -hmm. got me more into it you know where it was like yeah like that the little the sound that the little meat doll girl (laughs) makes when she's yeah i know where she's like like, It's so yeah, just cute. like the squishing and the squelching and the pounding yeah. and the slapping, like it was. Yeah, my also, subtitles. Whenever the little girl, the little doll was talking, it was just cooing. Oh, was- <laughs> coo! <laughs> also, the movement of like the little like um yeah the, the, like the squeak, the creaking, almost right of the little. You already you just said the name for it. The little thing armature. inside them, the armature. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was really cool. That was very well done, and w- and we get it throughout the whole movie. And I re- I really love that like tiny detail. I loved it too. Like I loved it. There's an end scene where there's not officially armatures in there in the mm-hmm. scene anymore, but it still is making the squeak, mm-hmm. and it's just such a cool subtle effect. Yeah, yeah. love it. So yeah, at this point, the little girl keeps coming in every day to bug her and she tells her Ella shows her what she did and the little girl's like it doesn't look good it looks fake like mm-hmm. it needs something else and that's when she brings her the meat and yeah. she you know makes the meat well she combines it the, mortician's wax is yeah, originally underneath what she it. uses well right and she's saying that's not enough so <laughs> she puts meat underneath the mortician's wax um here in my notes i think it was after they made that scene um I was like, I feel like the doll should go in the fridge. Like, that's yeah, right? not going to keep. No. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Please be, put your meat doll in the fridge. Be professional here. <laughs> no, I agreed. I I was thinking later, in a later scene, I thought, oh my gosh, her apartment has got to start smelling so just bad. Awful, right? <laughs> With just all yeah, that. then we're introduced to the Ash Man, who's yeah. the, the villain in her movie. And the little girl is like, no, he needs to be grosser. Like, it's mm-hmm. not good enough. Mm-hmm. And so they go outside and she sees a dead fox. And she's like, this is it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't take much to convince Ella. At first, she's like, no. Yeah, I was like, at first she doesn't, right? Yeah. And then but she like, goes doesn't... to the – doesn't she go to the party uh-huh. on her whole – Yes. yes. Yeah, it's after she yeah. goes to the party. Yes. So so we should we should back up and say what the story is going to be. So the little girl says, okay, Ella, I've got a better story for you. And it's about a little girl who is running from 
the ash man. And the ash man is someone that no one wants to meet. Mm -hmm. And he will come three times. Yeah. So just wanted to set it up. Everyone, because mm-hmm. like the first the first night he comes and he's gonna just knock and go away. And then we can talk about the other nights as they come. But yeah. But yeah, so so it, the the little girl tells Ella, you gotta use you need to use something dead to make the ash man. He's not scary enough right now. And so she shows Ella this dead fox out in the woods, and Ella's like, No, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then she feels like she's like getting stuck and she's not able to be creative so she goes to a party and her boyfriend's sister so ella's boyfriend's sister had at one point she's also into stop motion she had at one point told ella you know the best ideas i ever had was when i was tripping balls or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah or no no my tits off tripping my tits off (laughs) get the quote right Right. (laughs) But she is into stop motion in a very professional, legit place. Yes. Like she does legitimate productions that are like big money. So mm-hmm. she's like, you know, the sellout of stop motion. Whereas yes. Ella's still the small and do it in her house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, she does. She trips her tits out or off <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> out off out. <laughs> yeah so af- yeah she starts tripping and she i couldn't tell and maybe this is just because i don't really care about the boyfriend so i wasn't paying attention to him at some point she has sex at the party with someone and i couldn't tell if that was her boyfriend or someone else well I thought it was her boyfriend it, it was yeah. her boyfriend but then like at one point his face is just blurry yeah yeah but that just but, like, might be like where she's at you know yeah and like while they're having sex like she's envisioning you can tell the way so the way she's you know caressing his skin as they're you know going at it is you can tell it starts to go from like a a sexy way to like i'm pushing it the way i would like mold that um mortician's wax wax. Mm -hmm. it's like really cool Mm -hmm. (laughs) creepy and we get it we get the the creaking (laughs) It even Sound? kind of turns into mortician's wax in certain moments. Yeah. Where like mm-hmm. she digs in and it it's too pliable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, yeah, and the creaking. And like people so get in a people get in a fight and um some some guy gets a, a wound in his face and she like sticks her fingers in his wound. And again, the face. sound effects. And again, the squelching. Yeah. Oh, the squelch! And, and it was a long. I, I, I don't know if you, this. This is like a slow burn of a film. Yes, like it is. if you have yes. made it this far and you haven't watched it yet, like this is a slow burn of a film. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, all of these scenes, like you, we get to sit with them for so long mm-hmm. to the point where it's. I mean, and that's that's part of what makes you uncomfortable. Like it works, you know, but but I hate it because <laughs> like it's the kind of slow burn. Where there's no wasted moments. Mm -hmm. It's not a slow burn as in like they're just making the scene drag on and on. Like you are captivated. Yeah. At least like that was my like every moment of it. So it's a slow burn, but like a well done. It's building. It's building tension. And sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So then. So then she decides okay yeah i agree i'm gonna need to use something dead to make the ash man Mm -hmm. so she goes out and then there's that creepy little girl yeah she's already in the woods and at this point yeah it had been it had been a while back that i was i had already decided she was ella's vision of herself as a child so it made sense to me but otherwise it's like what is this little girl doing out in the woods yeah i feel like definitely at that point it was like oh she's not really because if earlier i started to question like what Mm -hmm. what is this little girl like i don't know they're in this weird abandoned building maybe she just hangs out here i don't know this is weird but definitely the wood scene is when it's like Mm -hmm. okay no she's yeah she's just not real Mm -hmm. yeah and then this is when i wrote which i don't what what we never learned the little girl's like name, no, right? Never. I mean, because no. we know her name is she actually nope. tells, and she's know. credited in the movie as just little girl. Mm-hmm. So I don't think okay. we get her name. Nope. So, and this is why I don't understand my note. I wrote she and stay intertwined. I don't know what that meant. She I don't either. <laughs> sometimes stay. I stay. She and stay intertwined. Well, I mean, the scene, the scene, you know, they she goes back and it gets like a little fuzzy and 
then she wakes up the next morning and her boyfriend like wakes her up and she reveals that she didn't take the drugs. Right. Like it's still in her shoe. Mm-hmm. Like she never right. actually took it. Right. Um, and that's when yeah. he was kind of like, I think you need to get out of the house. Mm-hmm. Like he's yeah. trying to like encourage her to like. Because at this point, she has just kind of, like, not left. Like, at the beginning, she was right. only using this space as a workspace, right? And then she was going to stay with her boyfriend. And now at this point, it was like, she doesn't leave. She sleeps there, works there. And you she tell she's not yeah. showering a lot. Mm-hmm. You she know. even, like, kicked him out. Right. Um, yeah. She smells like raw meat. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and we should say, before the boyfriend wakes her up the next day, um, so not only did she have, like, all of this, you know, tripping her tits off, even though she never took the drugs... She then has a vision where the ash man comes to visit her. Right. Yes. So he comes to visit her. He's knocking at the door. She is terrified. She is freaking out. She, the the scene that stuck stuck out to me with this is when she looked through the peephole and there's the bloody eyeball. Yeah. There were a few little jump scares in this movie, and jump scares get me every time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys! I know what I wrote. She and the story. That's not. Oh. It doesn't say. Stay. <laughs> she and story are intertwined. That oh, makes stay. more sense. See, I knew if I talked it out, it would mm-hmm. come to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is when you know your handwriting is terrible when you can't even read it. <laughs> so yeah, then there, there. I mean, other things happen. Like she's you're, she's just devolving for a while, and you know, her and her boyfriend are getting a little more tense, and the story is getting a little more tense with her and the little girl because you know she's trying to tell the little girl that like i don't want the ash man to touch her because that yeah. was what happened on the second night she's like no it isn't she gets away she, she's she trying to change that doesn't the story. happen mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. that doesn't work um obviously yeah and then, then she has a vision of and the little girl's like i'm not going to tell you what happens next until you make the story the way i want it right mm-hmm. so she says that you have to make it that the second night the ash man touches her because mm-hmm. otherwise I won't tell you what happens the third night. Right. Yes. But then she envisions the ash man touching her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which I feel like we need to talk about that vision. Is this the time when, so when he touches her, is this when the egg comes back? Or is That's that what I was thinking. Thing? Cause I wrote becomes the animation. It's the egg thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So on the second night, the Ash Man touches her. So now we're not talking about the claymation scene that Ella has made. We're talking about Ella. And so the Ash Man comes into her house and he's like going to touch her and she's trying to like run away, but then she becomes the clay person. She becomes the little clay girl. And so we see her kind of like, like running away and she goes through like this hole in the floor and then she goes into this room where it's this like gold crinkly fabric. Mm-hmm. But the Ash Man pulls her back. Yeah, and, and at least I thought it felt like a coffin. See, the I gold. didn't, I didn't catch that it was because I feel coffin. like that's the material that's it always is. in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's a weird fun fact about Brianna. When I was a teenager, I wanted to be a mortician mm-hmm. when I grew up, mm-hmm. but it turns out that's really hard to do. It's like a family yes. business, <laughs> hard to break into. Mm-hmm. So I I know a lot of weird things about being a mortician. So maybe that's just where my mind goes. But it right. felt like a coffin to me, like a pretty gold lame coffin. Yeah, see, I didn't get that either. I didn't catch it, yeah. We learned later it was like the material of a coffin. But mm-hmm. So nice catch. But yeah, I didn't catch that either. You know, mm-hmm. that doesn't always come in handy. But when it does, hey, <laughs> it pays yeah. off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, so then the, the Ash Man pulls her back in and he forces her to eat the egg but she's yeah. like choking on it yeah yeah and at this and, i don't even remember exactly what i wrote down but i was like what the hell is this thing yeah i'll tell you i'll tell you later <laughs> <laughs> laura will explain um, this whole movie to us <laughs> um Oh yeah, so this this comes after like there had been the argument where she had she told the girl I'm not going to do it, and the girl is like, okay, then I'm not going to tell you the third night. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, um, yeah, she this all happens. She eats the egg. It causes her pain, and then they like find her wandering around. Like they find Ella, like people do, just wandering around in the streets. 
Oh, I forgot about that. That yeah. Because mm-hmm. is it after that she goes to the production place? It's before this, actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so we're a little to... bit off in the time. It's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but before that happens, um, she had gone to her after the the first night scene that she had made. Tom, Tom is her boyfriend, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Come stay with me for a bit." So she goes and she stays with him for a bit. She leaves this house where she's being isolated like she's isolating herself right and but even then like she's still she's envisioning like his legs are clay Mm -hmm. and she she's trying to like break out of this mindset she's in Mm -hmm. and she like goes to work for tom's sister at the ad agency yeah, it's like at a at a stop motion production, so it's like a film yeah. production. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, and, but I thought they were making an ad or something. But so yeah. she learns that she's not there to work on animation; she's just going to build materials, like, like make eyeballs. eyeballs. Yeah, like right. Eyeballs. And at some point, you know, because something I don't think we've like put an emphasis on is that like her mom was very well known as a mm-hmm. stop motion. Like she yeah. was kind of like ahead of her time for what she did and um so at some point she's there and some guy mentions to like oh i saw your mom's movies and you can tell that just kind of gets her like kind of mm-hmm. burrows in mm-hmm. um and then she goes to be like you know what fuck this i'm gonna leave and she sees that the sister stole her material like what yes. she's doing with the ash man she stole the idea but is making it like a cookie cutter pretty movie version but clearly and a ripoff like, loses her shit she like starts to destroy it and get pissed mm-hmm. um and leaves so she's really like furthering herself from her outside connections yeah mm-hmm. yeah and after she leaves the the that place um with the sister she goes to visit her mom and her mom at this point was like almost dead yeah but but ella was like moving her mom's arm ever so slightly and then taking pictures and pictures and pictures so she was almost turning her mom's like lifeless arm into stop motion Mm -hmm. which i thought was Mm -hmm. trying to bring her bring her back yeah with stop motion Mm -hmm. but yeah so but then she she goes back to her apartment and then the second night happens where the ashman tucks touches her and sticks the egg down her throat and then she ends up like wandering the streets yes and so then her boyfriend at that point because they they find her and they they take her to the hospital so she wakes up and she's like all banged up um and she had started to even cut her own leg already at this point i think oh or is that when the little girl that's the that's the little doll that's when the cute little doll yeah comes in so yeah because she left the hospital because Tom was like, I'm going to go tear your shit up. I'm like, going to destroy your stuff. Like, this and is- so she convinces him not to do it until the morning so she can be there. Like, mm-hmm. she's like, I need to be there for it. I built it. I need to destroy it. Yeah. Um, but then she bounces. She's out. She, like, flees the hospital. Mm-hmm. Well, the the mom dies, too. Well, yeah. right. So she's already she's in, the in the hospital. While she's in yeah. the hospital, mom dies, and then she leaves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then she's she's out of there. So our first death, mom. You can tell, like, she is not well. No. No, things have fully, by the time she's in the hospital, things have fully started to spiral. And you can kind of tell by, like, the cinematography, like, shots change a little more abruptly and jaggedly. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. you just kind of get into that Mm -hmm. with her, which is Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. But now we... she is, Is this one, so she goes back, I feel like one of the things that like randomly stuck with me is like when she gets back and like the dead fox or whatever it started to like decompose and it's just full of maggots Maggots. Maggots so it's like you just you really see the state Mm -hmm. that this room is in and it's like it is just it is just like disgusting yeah yeah it's it's so gross but it's also dried out so the quote that i wrote down that the little girl says is because so now it's time to get to the third night so Mm -hmm. it's which is you know the culmination the end of the project. Um, but the little girl points out that the fox meat has dried out so that they need something more bleedy. Yep. She's like active blood. Yeah. 
Yeah. To which Ella, like in her defense, I guess she tr- she's trying to overcome this girl vision that she's having, and so she goes and she like tries to choke out the little girl. Yeah. Which is a really intense scene, especially when you're thinking about the fact that it's herself. Yes. It's her version of herself as a younger person that she's like trying to stifle. And this is the moment that she realizes the little girl is not real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So she chokes her and it's like, oh, she's dead. Right. And then, and then bam, she's as right. soon as Ella like turns around, the little girl comes back and is like, all right, now that you've gotten that out of your system. Right. Mm-hmm. like, <laughs> mm-hmm. And she had a cut. Ella had a cut on her leg that was stitched up from the yeah. hospital. Yeah. Um, and like it, they had found her wandering and she had cut herself um Mm -hmm. so she has this like big wound on her thigh Mm -hmm. yeah it's great source blood Mm -hmm. well and the the little girl points out she says you know all great artists put themselves into their work Mm -hmm. and you know you know what's gonna happen oh and again this one is like one of the ones where the sound effects just like Mm -hmm. because it is drawn out Mm, this is not a quick scene. scene. It's so upsetting. And the director said, like, for for this scene, you know, like, just, like, they felt like it was just working so well. So, like, they used the full thing that they shot. Like, okay. they, they didn't cut any of wow. it. They thought it just, it worked with it being this long. <laughs> I agree. Oh, it did. It did. Because, yeah, she, like, pops each stitch one yeah. by one. And then this is when I wrote down the squelch with like three exclamation points because it was just so gross and then okay she pulled something out and like the uh, so she digs her finger into the wound and she's like pulling something out and what was it was it a vein was it a tendon i thought I tendon. Tell what it was yeah i thought tendon, tendon maybe the way that it, it looked very veiny no but it was sturdy enough it, it didn't, was sturdy yeah i bet, it's I tendon. Tendon. I bet you're right and it, it, what's also happening in this moment is that, like, the boyfriend and the sister know that she's left. And, like, you know what? I'm going to say, like, good on them for caring to still go. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, she had been a real shit to Tom in the hospital. Yeah. She, I was think she was trying to, like, get him to leave her alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was real mean. And, like, she was really mean to the sister. So, like. Right. Yeah. But they, I, they did. They and I feel like I feel like they do a good job of showing, you know, that the the sister and Tom, they're not perfect. And I feel like they kind of portray them in the negative light the way that Ella has started to see them. But if you kind of can read through the lines, like you can tell like they're they're good people and they care about her. So they're they're trying the best they can with someone who's clearly suffering a breakdown. Yeah. Other than stealing her idea. Well, like, okay, so that, that that's was bad. messed up. That's bad. <laughs> but she even says she's like, I was gonna give you money for it. So I right. think she yeah. was maybe thinking, you know, Ella can't you can't handle it clearly. You're stand on well. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so they, they walk in, well, they break the door down into this scene of her just like talking to herself <laughs> and deveining her leg. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> and she kind of passes out from it for a bit too, and they like bust in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just this very chaotic scene. and they're trying to like carry her out right it's, it's how it's like yeah they're like, they're okay, like we're we've just, got to get her so they're just grabbing we're just gonna her. take you to the hospital yeah. <laughs> between the two of them <laughs> yeah because at, at this point yeah this is when she's like kind of slightly passing out so i think they're thinking okay well you know maybe she won't fight us that much or she's clearly weak from loss of blood so we'll we'll just take her and boy were they wrong oh man she, she fought the good fight oh she fights, and she killed them <laughs> And it's so gruesome. So the boyfriend is, so I think, I think the sister's first, right? Because the boyfriend mm-hmm. gets like kicked down the stairs. Yeah, she pushes him down the she stairs. Pushes him down the stairs, but he's still alive. So yeah. the sister is mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. And I had to look away. I was like, I, yeah, no, I just wrote down. I was like, I'm, I'm not watching. <laughs> I was like, this yeah. seems like overkill. I didn't watch. Ask them about this. <laughs> she has a camera <laughs> tripod. Yeah. And yeah. she's she's already like knocked her down. Because yeah, first she smashes right. her head a bunch. Right, yep. with the camera tripod. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then she gets one of the legs and inserts it into her neck, into her throat. Yeah. Like through her neck. Yeah. Um Again, the sounds and the, the length 
of these scenes. It was, it was a long one. Is yeah. not. It is not for the week. But no. then I loved Tom's because if you remember early in the movie when it's still like happy and mm-hmm. everyone loves each other, her and Tom are in bed and Tom is sleeping like on his back and she plugs his nose yeah which i thought was like and you know he gasps for air and panicked so i it's like there was some foreshadowing there Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) oh 100 percent, 100 percent. because yeah he's now in the stairwell um and he's like weak because he's been knocked unconscious but she just starts suffocating him with her hands Mm -hmm. um and he tries fighting it but like it does not work no no, no. So. and then she drags both their bodies back and doesn't the little girl say like oh now we have a lot of blood or doesn't she say yeah something she says like something along the lines of like oh yeah. this is even better yeah she's <laughs> like this is even better okay. she's so excited <laughs> yeah um wild and then we see what ends up happening with them mm-hmm. is that she ends up turning them into bigger armature like the, the clay doll not clay dolls obviously human dolls like for her right, yeah stop motion um with you know like the the mortician's wax and meat and their face parts and mm-hmm. skulls and it's very upsetting <laughs> it's it's so upsetting <laughs> <laughs> oh so she's like having them act out um the scene but then ashman comes to ella mm-hmm. and then she starts ripping off her own face <laughs> right yeah <laughs> um because like her face kind of becomes clay mm-hmm. but she's like ripping it off um she's and like, feeding it like to feeding him. him yeah yeah again with those sound effects and then we see a we see like a we see a scene of the black egg, and then it's it opens up, and it's like bloody goo inside. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of questions, but yeah, yeah. and that's it. Like, well, so then, she, yeah. So she like she and the girl then watch the scene. Like mm-hmm. this is being filmed, and it's the scene of her dying. Like, yeah on like she's making the movie of her own death Mm -hmm. um and then we also see her get into a coffin which has the gold material they're they're in the house right from the stop motion like they're now in the cardboard little house Mm -hmm. house Mm -hmm. watching the movie and then yeah she she opens the box that had been sitting in the room with the matching gold interior Yep. And she just that was my last note. And then she just goes in her box. She just period. Goes in her box. Yeah. My last note was that I also absolutely loved the um the sound that played during the whole end credits it was so disturbing and creepy. That is gonna be the entire soundtrack for my Halloween party. Just that. It's just that on a loop. <laughs> like just that on a loop. Because it's so creepy. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. And and that was stop motion. <laughs> it's a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind. No, this this to me is like absolutely one of those like fever dreams. Like there yeah. there are a, only a few movies I've seen that like really kind of nail that. And maybe, maybe it's because for me it was in fact a fever dream. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like I don't even remember all of the scenes or like the whole story, but it's like it's about these like images, you know, like that's that's what stuck with me. It's like all of these like images that happen throughout. Yeah, I like I will never forget what the the little girl looks like. Mm-hmm. Like she that that image and the sounds will stick with me forever. Oh, I think. Sounds. Yeah. Well, and just the fact that the movie was able to accomplish like you taking on her perspective of what she was seeing and what it looked like for her, mm-hmm. but then also showing us her experiencing that. Yeah. Like that's that's convoluted man like well done Mm because yeah that was that was a lot 
So do we have some some psych? I'm oh, so Lord, curious. I think where, that's just gonna like this might have to be a four like hour like an hour long. Because, <laughs> yeah. My God. I know. So so here's here's my um my disclaimer on the psych. Well, first we'll, we'll give our oh yeah. yeah just 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 don't forget she's not a real doctor, but these are not real dolls and Ashman. Um, yeah. So my disclaimer on that is a lot of the topics that um, I want to talk about today are ones we've already talked about. Mm-hmm. So they're diag- so I I for this one because it's so psych heavy. I thought let's go back to our roots of what we used to do when we like first started out. Of I'm just going to diagnose the characters. Nice. So yeah. um, we'll uh, well, and then also talk about a little bit about the the theory and the symbolism of this movie. So to start out with the easy one, we'll start out with the abusive mom. Pretty standard narcissist. So the mom only cares about herself. This is kind of what leads to her abuse of Ella. Um, She's this big, popular, well-known, you know, stop motion person, but she does it at the expense of others. And that is all she cares about. She doesn't care about her daughter's happiness. She's, you know, um, even though like her daughter is clearly suffering and obviously this movie that we see is not the first time Ella has shown mental health problems that doesn't just come out of nowhere, but the mom doesn't care. She's still going to use and abuse Ella for her own gain of being this famous, you know, stop motion maker. So that's Mm -hmm. all she cares about is the fame of that. Yeah. So that's an easy one. So Ella, sweet Ella, she is clearly having some delusions and hallucinations. She is having thoughts of persecution. She feels like, you know, the sister, the ash man, even her boyfriend at times, they're all kind of out to get her and stop her from, you know, living her dream of being this stop motion maker. Um, So... I'm giving her a couple of diagnoses. The first one could be that she has complex PTSD. And we've talked about post-traumatic stress disorder in the past, but the reason why I think uh, Ella's is more complex is because it's it's from this ongoing relationship with her mom full that's full of verbal, emotional, and then, Brianna, I agree like you, even physical abuse. Um, like in a way that she, her mom forces her to be her, like her hands, despite the pain that she's having, she like forces Ella to wake up even when Ella hasn't gotten enough sleep. She forces mm-hmm. Ella to like do all these things. So I think, it, I think it's the abuse in each of those domains. Yeah. So it creates this complex level of PTSD because it's been so ongoing and in so many forms. Mm-hmm. But I'm also going to diagnose her with schizoaffective disorder with depression. So the reason I'm not just saying it's that she has schizophrenia is because I feel like these delusions, hallucinations, this isolation and persecution, it's, it's also happening with depression because I think she clearly also has major depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the schizophrenia. Um, so, you know, the, the hallucinations, we already talked about the, the persecution feelings that she's having the hallucinations. The big one is the childhood version of herself, which I think is a result of the unresolved trauma with her mom. So, um, one of the things that the DSM have is, has, is when you give someone a diagnosis, you can have these like sub things that can occur with it and that you can specify. So, um, one of the things that's an interesting way that they, they, um, a term that they use is you can specify if the delusions are with bizarre content. That's the clinical term or that's the official term you could use. Nice. And so this happens when delusions are deemed bizarre, if they are clearly implausible, not understandable, and not derived from ordinary life experiences. So I would say, you know, people's skin becoming clay, 
viewing a younger version of yourself, I would say that Ella's delusions definitely um, have bizarre content. A little bizarre. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> um, in addition to, you know, having that persecution type that she has. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about some psych theory. The theory I think that's happening behind this movie. Okay. So Ella's overbearing mom. This has caused her to have this need to be independent and to separate her identity from her mom, while at the same time, never having been taught the skills or been given the permission to be able to do that. So it's creating this like fractured psyche within her brain, which is part of, she already is predisposed to the diagnoses I've already gave her, the mental health problems. But then when you add on top this really awful relationship with her mom, that's kind of what leads to the presentation that her mental health uh, disorders come out as. So I think that her Ella's identity is so intertwined with her mom that after her mom has the stroke, Ella just does not know how to exist in the world. So she has to go into this world of fantasy even if it's yeah. a horrifying world of fantasy yeah. because because she cannot exist without her mom even though she has this need to she's just too intertwined um so and because of because of that conflict too i think that's what leads to the self destructive behaviors we see with her because it's not just that she's you know having these delusions and hallucina- hallucinations she also doesn't sleep she also pushes everyone who cares about her away. She's isolating herself. So she's just doing things to make her own situation worse as just a way because she can't she can't cope with what's happening mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, in her life. So my hypothesis is that the childhood vision that um, Ella sees, I think she is envisioning herself at the exact age where her mom started with the abuse so i mean she was maybe always kind of abusive but the age that the little girl ella is in the movie is right around the times where you would have that manual dexterity to be able to actually do the stop motion Mm -hmm. so i think it's right it's this is the last time or right around that age that ella went from having a childhood to just being her her mom's puppet um it's because it's she almost even like, called her puppet. She even I mean, called yeah, her puppet. Says it, yeah, yeah. She even called her puppet. Yep. And so it's so at Ella transitioned from being you know a child to just being this puppet for mom to use and abuse, and mm-hmm. even kind of acting toward Ella like you're just a piece of of meat or you're just one of my puppets to manipulate, just like I do in the stop motion. And that's all that you mean to me, nothing more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Then the egg. So let's talk about the egg. Oh my gosh. So you have a theory of what the egg is? Because I legitimately don't know. I do. So I pulled out my trusty old complete book of dreams because I feel like the egg is a dream. So it's one of your most useful resources. I know. Honestly. (laughs) I know. So even without any context, this book tells me that things like eggs and seeds Seeds symbolize a desire to grow into something important. Oh. oh. Which completely mm. matches what's happening here. So Ella has this desire to grow into something important, to, to either live up to her mom's reputation or maybe even exceed her mom's reputation. Mm-hmm. But because this complicated, traumatic, abusive relationship she has with her mom, not only does this, this seed, this um, you know, this egg, this desire to grow, it's already kind of dark and tainted. In addition to it not working for her to grow into something important, it ends up stifling her. That's what the choking is for. Like it's sti- like this need to have this dream is what ends up stifling her um, and choking her and leading to her destruction. Damn. Damn. So I think the egg is actually a perfect symbol. I mean, that tracks. Yeah, I, I have no idea. That's For what, happened. what like, an it. egg could represent. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense. Well, and then when you know that that's kind of what it could mean, looking back on it throughout mm-hmm. the movie, you're like, oh, well, of course. Mm-hmm. That's what the egg is. Totally. Interesting. Who knew? 
Yeah. So it's not a long psych I had today because I think it's just things to kind of think over and ponder like what, what the diagnoses are and mm-hmm. also kind of some of the theory of what, what the symbols in the, the movie meant. Mm-hmm. Like being puppets, being manipulated, eggs growing into things. And you know what I wonder is that I think horror is unique because like it can really play on your own issues and what you've got going on. So it's like this is the kind of movie that I think depending on your own background, Mm -hmm. you might feel different things are happening. Like it might pull out different psychological issues based on your own trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'd be so curious what other people's interpretation mm -hmm. of like the little girl and like the ex. So I think we all fell in the same category of like mm-hmm. this is her inner child i mean she even kind of looks like her right, like you exactly. know it, i think we all fell in that same category mm-hmm. but when the director in one of the interviews said that in the original script he actually he didn't say what she is he was like mm-hmm. i think it should be up to interpretation um he was like i know what i think it should be and it was more clear in the first script that they wrote up mm-hmm. but then they kind of intentionally took it back a little bit to make it a little bit more vague I so like he that. said he had like heard a bunch of like some people think like oh she's actually like a demon um nice she was like seeing which like I, when you think about that it's like actually yeah that that could kind of work mm-hmm. she yeah. could be a demon you know like th- there's a bunch of different interpretations of what people could have for both the little girl and the egg and i'd be so curious what other people yeah. thought it yeah. was Definitely. that is interesting because i yeah i feel like and maybe this is just because of my background I feel that this movie was so clearly just symbolism for the struggle that people can have with mental health and with, mm-hmm. you know, accepting help, getting help, how how people with mental health uh, difficulties that are exposed to trauma and abuse can have such compounding effects on their lives. That to me was like, Clearly, that's what this movie is about. Also, it's really mm-hmm. like freaking visually cool and scary. But yes. that to me, I was like, well, that's clearly it. Well, and for <laughs> me, I mean, I mostly just picked up on issues with the mother. So, like, yeah. well, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> it's it's accurate. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. There nope. you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll leave the psych a little bit more for everyone to interpret for themselves. But that those are some ideas to maybe take with you to think about as you yeah, watch like and if you got a different vibe, let us know yeah. what you were right. thinking. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, this is definitely one to go into with an open mind. Like, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Funny because at first I was thinking like I would, and we we'll talk about this more when we get to our ratings. But I was thinking like. I love this movie, but I don't know that I'd watch it again. But now knowing some of what our conversation is, I kind of do want to watch it again and see what right. I pick up on the second time. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah, knowing where it's going to go. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about a rewatch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I wonder if that would... I bet it, it would have to there. change. Because even think of like little things like when um, Ella turns into the little like clay girl and you know, you and I didn't catch that that was probably like a casket that she had gone into and then gotten pulled out of where it's like little things like that Mm -hmm. you would know on the rewatch right so then like thinking back to it it it's like oh what did she did she get close to to death Mm -hmm. when she was a little girl and got pulled out from like i feel like you can you could probably get even more Mm -hmm. on a rewatch yeah Mm -hmm. definitely okay so for fun facts for this movie i think just because it's more indie smaller you know, again, not an extensive IMDb like Wikipedia. So I just listened to interviews with the director and tried to pull some little snippets. So I'll just share a few fun facts for the movie. Okay. Um, one that I thought was funny was casting the little girl for the movie. Um, because, you know, casting kids can be hard. Like, it's hard to find good child actors, hard to find one that'll work. Um, so the director said the way they chose her is she had recently done the midnight sky which is a movie with george clooney and Mm -hmm. he saw an interview with george clooney talking about how you know it took them forever to find the right child actor and they they talked to like hundreds of kids until they landed on her and he was like well i mean if she's good enough for that 
Let's bring her in for this I mean, movie. that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, it's good Let's endorsement. Let's let George Clooney do all the hunting <laughs> and casting. If she's and good for George. Too. <laughs> she's good enough Where's for that? George. Yep. I thought that's she did solid. a good job. Yeah, no, I thought she was yeah. good. I just love that it was like, well, I don't know, good enough for George Clooney's movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Um, The way that they made this movie is that they shot the live action and then if there was like a, you know, the scene where like they blend, they would do kind of like live action and then bring in the animators to do stuff. And then for the movie within a movie stuff, the director just kind of did that on his own oh. um, mm. later during the editing process. Um, so for the scenes where there's the blend of like live action and animation, um, I guess what they would do is they would shoot the live action and then... They couldn't use the same set because the animators, I mean, as you know, we saw with the movie, stop motion takes a really long time. Right. Um, If they just kept the set as is, you know, the animators would have to like, come in, put the little doll in, walk away, come back in, Mm -hmm. the little doll. So it would just take like way too long. So instead what they did is they just rebuilt an identical second set that was four feet off the ground. So it had like a little trap door that the animators could like come through adjust the little figure and then hide again and oh. then come through do it and then hide again oh, oh my cool. gosh what a wild way to do this or yeah. Like, yeah, that's like that still sounds so tedious uh-huh. I, I honestly i cannot imagine i think stop motion is so cool but just the amount of patience you would have to have because if you mess up then you have to like figure out how to get them back to the original position and then micro millimeter move them like mm-hmm. i just don't understand how you can ha- possibly mm-hmm. have that patience right well and i guess that's one thing that was kind of cool with the way they did it um because the director had been making stop motion films so like he made the the movie within a movie scenes um and by waiting to do this until after they finished all the live action stuff. And then while they were working on editing, it actually made it a lot easier for him because he knew stuff that he could maybe cut out or he mm-hmm. could make tweaks because they were already working on the editing. So it was like, oh, if we have the figure, you know, ending this way, we can transition more easily back to the live action stuff. So apparently that process actually worked a lot better for him. Interesting. Hmm. Kind of makes sense. Um he, the director said he he had kind of has the same setup as as Ella, where it's just in his house with like okay lighting and like a camera and like a laptop, um, and the laptop that Ella's using to make her movie is his actual laptop that he oh. uses to make stop motion <laughs> movies. Interesting. So they just threw his laptop in there. <laughs> it makes me wonder if if she at all is based off of some of the struggles he's had in life or something. Yeah, you know, he said that there's so much like for him, it was more the the idea of making stop motion movies. So I think he's been making it for like 20 years or something like he's been working with stop motion for a long time. And he said he really experienced that like and it, and it makes sense. You're working with these like puppets, you know, is what they call them um, forever. Mm-hmm. And so he said they really do start to kind of like gain a life of their own, you mm-hmm. know, like you're molding them, but like they start to kind of get their own personalities and like feel real and like you have all these animators who like you know they need to put the dolls like away Mm -hmm. if they're doing it in their house because like they just start to feel so real so part of it came from that um he didn't have as much of the um trauma uh Mm -hmm. you know right i don't think i don't think his relationship with his mom is like it's like the actress hopefully not (laughs) good Good for him yeah so that's where the idea came from and then the story kind of developed after that where it's like well what could a story about a stop motion animator look like um and then that's that's how they started to get the story together Hmm. so cool interesting Mm -hmm. oh the um squeaking like creaking sound that we talked about you know like when they move the dolls that was actually the idea of the sound designer not the director. So the sound designer came to him and said, Hey, like, what if we added this in a little bit? And at first, (laughs) at first, I guess they overdid it. Like it was like every time Tom would move, they had the little squeaking sound where he got like borderline comical. So they were like, this is such a good idea. And then they immediately overused it and then tailored it back. And like, I, again, that was one of my favorite, like little things that they added. It was such and a good I touch. think, yeah, what, what they ended on was the perfect amount of it because yeah. it was just enough to be creepy. Yeah. Um, 
they did not use any meat in creating these puppets. Apparently, okay. meat is terrible to work with because, you know, he was like, I tried, um, but it dries <laughs> up quickly. You know, like it, it's not a good material. It needs to be more weighty. Need, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it immediately dries up. It doesn't hold up for very long. Like it's it's not a good material. So they used basically like a silicon rubber plus Vaseline to make it look like meat. Okay. I did some reading on it because I was interested in like the history of stop motion. Mm -hmm. I guess the first stop motion was at the end of the 1800s. It was like 1890 something was the Mm. first stop motion movie. But apparently in the 20s, they did use meat for some of it because it did give a realistic Mm -hmm. look. So like in the 20s, they it's not like everyone was, but it was common to use actual meat. Um yeah, I think they'll Which kind of use gross. anything for stop motion. It's like you can you can use anything to make a little puppet or a little Because there's just something figure. inherently creepy about stop motion. Yeah. Like yeah. I've never seen a stop motion that I didn't think was a little creepy. Right. Even if it's like a very cheerful children's thing, I still think it's eerie. Well, yeah, just because the way they move and stuff, like it, it adds a little bit of a Yeah, it's eerie. Element. Yeah. Um, speaking of um, things to make these puppets out of, um, the director did say one of the weirdest materials he's used – to make a puppet or a figure for stop motion is um, he used his toenails. So he unplanned just saves his toenails. Um, So for like a full year, he had his toenails in a jar and then he was working on a movie and he was like, Oh, this is what I'm going to use to make the figure. Why? How would that even work? You're welcome for that. (laughs) Like how fast do his toenails grow? It was a full year. Okay, oh, but wait. I, my toenails don't grow that much. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that he had no reason to save his toenails in a jar for a year, and then a, after a year goes by, he's like, "Oh, hey, maybe I'll do something with them. I'll make a figure." So yep. he was just for no reason saving yes. his toenails. In I don't a jar. Know he was why, just I, saving them. I respect that. Was it a mason jar? Because that's what I'm picturing, <laughs> like know. one of those cute little mason jars. Yes, it's like so cute. Yeah. I don't know why, but I respect it. You know, huh. it's weird. I like. I just it. love that he had to have the moment of like, oh my gosh, thank God I have that jar of toenails. Finally, what is this director's name? <laughs> um, oh my gosh, what is his name? Um, Robert Morgan. You just need to see the person who. who well, did I this. no, I just see the figure he made from his toenails. Oh God, don't don't Google that. Don't. <laughs> I, I googled Robert Morgan toenail figure, and I don't. Okay, like so now. we're gonna move on. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to know. I want to see the figure that he. You, made. you, you go ahead and keep searching. We're gonna. He's made a lot of short films. I mean, okay. I'll, who knows? Maybe this was like a. And I don't. I don't know if you can find this figure. He if just you find it, Laura, you send us a picture used. and we'll post it. He makes really creepy stop motion figures. I like. I like him. this guy. Yeah, we might have to throw in one of his shorts. He yeah. has he has he has a few that look good. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay, and then my last just like fun fact is this was a very low budget movie. I think they had less than a million dollars to oh, to okay. work oh. on it. And then they had 25 days to shoot. So they were on like a very very oh my goodness. tight timeline and budget. And he said it was like, yeah, like it was to the point where you had to shoot a lot of scenes in a day uh-huh. and if you didn't get to it, that then you just don't get that it scene in the movie. Happen. Like, mm. and he did say it happened a couple times where they just ran out of time, and it was wow. like, okay, well, we just don't get to have that scene. Dang. <laughs> Wild, yeah. So, shorter fun facts for this movie. You guys, I found the the figure. <gasps> um. So I'll I'll send it to you and we can post it to our Instagram. Did you like you have wait you have to like send the link or something just so, yeah, send so it to we can see it. Text. Okay, so here's here is the website. That Are you I'm putting on. in like the chat. Yeah, so I just put it in the chat and then just scroll like just find the toe. So um, it's <laughs> worm tailed. Yeah, if you just control F toe, the worm tailed tangela is um. Is what was made out of the toenails. Ew. But like even just all of the characters that are in this website are really gross looking. Yeah. yeah. I think it's creepy. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Okay, well, that's your homework. You're going to find okay, us that'll a be picture my homework. of this. I'll Moving find an on. actual picture of Tangela. Keep, keep an eye out for this, for yeah. this post, guys. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about what we're sipping on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just saw that talk of toenail clipping. Yeah, it just Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, in the movie we we tried to pay attention. Um and the only thing they drink is wine. Yeah. At one point so she and Tom drink some red wine. Yeah, so we're drinking red wine tonight. You know, it's been a while since we did just a red wine. So that kind of is a good classic too. choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. Pick whatever your favorite blend is and mm-hmm. pour yourself a glass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely do a I would say do a red wine blend because the stop motion is a blend of meat and mortician wax mm-hmm. and, you know, all those things. So mm-hmm. blend it up. Yes. Love it. Blend yes. of child, inner child. <laughs> and egg. Egg. Uh, and, egg and, humans. Yeah. Reality. Yep. Delusions. Yep. Hallucinations. It's all blended together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a red blend. What a movie. What an experience. I just... You know, it's one of those ones that, like, I do think I want to see again. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be and, you know, I, I will say, like, it was one of those movies where I was captivated the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. love when that happens. Same. Like. Yeah. And it's, like, it's short. I think it was, yeah. what, 90 minutes? Maybe yeah. maybe hour mm-hmm. 33 mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah. Like, it's pretty short but they pack a lot in there we Mm -hmm. love that on spooky Mm -hmm. we Mm -hmm. love a 90 minute movie we really do okay so before we get into it here on spooky sips we don't give stars we give sips so out of five sips of red wine how many do you give this movie i'll go first i'm giving it a four i really liked it Mm -hmm. i think that it is one that you should watch. So like for me, when it's higher, that means you should watch it is my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I loved the gore and the sound effects, but I also just loved the story and the way that they executed it. Mm -hmm. And it actually had me like tense. Like, I don't know that I was like scared, but like I would, I was tense in moments and the eyeball did give me a jump scare, which Mm -hmm. it's hard for me to get a jump scare mm-hmm. life has jump scared me enough so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah i'm a four. Ooh, okay i feel like for me and i'm gonna I, i'm gonna add the disclaimer i've already mentioned it I'm, i was actively sick i i literally had a fever this right. was a literal fever dream for me right um so i feel like that may have had an effect and i feel like it's gonna be worth a rewatch so i can like have the mental capacity to understand this movie <laughs> But mm-hmm. I think for me, there were things that I didn't like. Um, I think it had moments where I was like, I feel like you're telling me something instead of showing it to me. Like there mm-hmm. were there were like certain things that I didn't I didn't love. I really liked the stop motion. I feel like the way it was filmed, like the cinematography was really cool. The sound was really cool. So I think for me it's like a solid like three. Like I'm like right in the middle. 3.0. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny because I almost want to go higher than the score I'm going to give it just because I like this movie freaked me out. Like I did. I was scared going to bed. Like I kept like, you know, that feeling you get after a really scary movie where like something's going to be there. Like this movie freaked me out and it stuck with me for a while. And I love the story. And I just I loved the animation. I love the psychology of it. So much of it I loved. And I. Originally, I was thinking, I don't know if I could watch this movie again. It really disturbed me. But then now I'm thinking maybe I would watch it again. Mm -hmm. But to me, like a a perfect movie is one that's like one I want to go back and watch over and over again. Like it's just like kind of a comfort horror. If that is such a thing. And to me, I don't know that this one would be that. So I almost want to go higher, but I'm going to stick with my original solid four. Mm -hmm. Solid four, must watch, really, really good, scary movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Nice. All around, recommend watching it. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we are still in October, so we're doing one every week. So mm-hmm. next week, we're going with one of my favorite horrors, and we're watching Jennifer's Body. I'm excited for I haven't seen it. I cannot wait to hear <laughs> what you think of this movie. I have so much to Because, say. like, I graduated high school in 2007. This movie was 2009. So I kind of feel like I was the prime age for this movie to, like, impact my life. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'll be interested to see what you think being younger. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm excited There's for a it. lot of, like, <laughs> shit that doesn't fly anymore in it, but it's absolutely Um, prepare yourself for that but yeah absolutely it's still yeah yeah well i'm excited so if you haven't seen it yet shame on you but get watching and get sipping and we'll see you next time on spooky sips goodbye thank you for listening to spooky sips if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to rate review and subscribe wherever you're listening to stay up to date on all the spooky things we're up to Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Spooky Sips underscore podcast. And if you want to help support the podcast, consider buying us a coffee or really a cocktail. We are completely independent, so every little bit goes a long way to keeping our podcast running and improving. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks.